Canix just announced its new VRX module, but what's even more surprising is that it's at a price so low that it's almost certainly being sold at a loss. My prices are so low, you'll think I've suffered brain damage. John here, guys, and today we're talking about the beginning of the HD FPV wars. The war is upon us, guys. Three entrants are competing for your dollars for your business for your flight time and we're going to talk about who you should be betting on because after all with all these new technologies it's almost certainly a gamble so the walk snail kit 200 dollars for a module but that's not all guys it includes patch antennas it includes a video transmitter the 1s tiny one and a small camera that's less than the price of the HD Zero module alone. So they are coming out swinging hard. For a lot of people that already have very expensive FPV goggles, they may not have the money or the desire to spend five, six, seven hundred dollars on a new set of goggles for one of the other systems. And having an option for just a little bit of money to be able to get one quad up in the air flying digitally and then decide what you want to do from there is something that we haven't seen before from any of the companies. You can also upgrade to the better, bigger video transmitter and the better micro camera for only $40 on top of that. Now, before you get that checkout finger ready, let's go over all of the options to decide which one's going to be the best for you to be the most future proof. The DJI Avada and the new goggles have been released for a few months now, but what we do know also in combination with that is that the O30 unit, which is basically the same camera system that's inside the Avada, will be coming out in just a few short weeks. In the month of November 2022, that should be at retailers and you can get it in your hands. That works with the DJI Goggles 2 and the DJI FPV2 Goggles, which are almost the same name. Come on, DJI. And that will give you the highest quality image, the highest quality recording. It may cause some people to ditch their GoPros and go with this system moving forward. Now, it is going to have a much higher price. Some people are speculating somewhere between $250 and $350. So it may not be the type of product that you have on 10 quads like you could on the DJI system. So it's going to divide the hobby. Some people are going to be all about it, probably professionals or people that would have been smashing 10 GoPros. Maybe they can get away with only having one or two of these units and smash a lot less. The HD Zero goggles. We should have a set of Alpha goggles in the town. So subscribe so that you don't miss that footage coming up very, very soon. But those are speculated to be released so that you can have them in your Christmas stocking and hopefully open them up on Christmas morning or even before. So that's coming right around the corner. There's been a lot of coverage. Go check out a video that I created to show what we know about the goggles so far. Also, that 90 frame per second camera that was used by Noikel at MultiGP Champs in order to get a podium finish uh, should be available around the same time. And lastly, the Walksnell system. That's been a bit of a wild card. They introduced to very poor sales. There's been a large number of sales offered with this system. The goggles you could get for 40 or 50% off if you just had a bag of Caddx units. How much can I get for this Caddx? I think you'd have to give me like half of the company. I feel like if, if this was Pepsi, I could get that Harrier jet almost. They also offered a money back guarantee for 30 days. Now, does that apply to the new module? I believe that it does. And then there's the curious practice of Walksnail offering creators deals in order to get heavy discounts on the system, but then requesting them not to disclose that they are a partner of their promotion program. And that seems a little sketch. Bardwell made this post on Facebook yesterday saying that he wishes people that were a part of this program were disclosing it. I think that's in response to Walks now asking them not to. We don't know what type of bias that introduces. Now for larger creators, actually I don't consider myself a larger creator, but for creators that actually have a budget, whether I'm sent a product that's two or three or $500 for free doesn't really influence me to give an opinion one way or the other. Now, if they were paying me several thousand dollars, that would be different. But for a smaller creator, the first time you get something for free, there's no mistaking that sense of obligation you may feel. And so unless you have a background in giving purchase recommendations, 
that is something that's a little bit sketchy and I get exactly where Barbell is coming from. Now, is this just a last ditch effort before they finally go under with this system? That's the gamble that you have to decide if you want to take or not because you don't want to be stuck with a system that is no longer supported, no longer manufactured, kind of like the Bifrost users. Um, is this a strategy like HD Zero did when they sold their VRX Shark Bite module for $99 just to get it in more hands, taking it at a loss. It's been done before in many other industries, including this one. Or is it a last ditch effort of a failing product? Is it the Betamax of FPV? Is it the HD DVD? Is it the metaverse? Because we all know that Meta and, my, and Mark Zuckerberg has been pumping in enough money to fill two Scrooge McDuck money bins in order to fund this thing. But after all of that, nobody really wants to use it at all. Is Walksnell going to be like that? Metaverse more like meh -tiverse. Get it? Get it? And can our tiny niche hobby of first person video flying support three different HD systems in addition to analog? And I don't think that it will. I think two of these are going to survive. So when you're putting your money down, regardless of which one you think is the best for you personally, you gotta figure which one is gonna be able to survive in the long run. And I don't think we can support three systems. Even two is a little sketchy. You don't want to end up with this gear that you can't use for anything. So what's the gamble? The gamble is that you pay your money, the system goes extinct, it's no longer supported, and you end up with your TurboGrafx-16 that you can't buy games for anymore, basically. That said, the gamble's now cheaper than ever. Before you had to spend five, six hundred dollars on a new set of goggles, even more to get a video transmitter and a camera set up and build it all. Now, when the cost, are the pot odds good enough for you to throw some of your money down on the table? I mean, if you lose 200 bucks, it stings a lot less than you losing six or eight or 900. So in order to test the system and feel it out, $200 does seem a lot more reasonable. What are you gonna do with your FPV budget? Which of these horses are you backing or are you still sitting on the sidelines enjoying your analog video and just laughing at all of us, grasping at straws, trying to figure out the best HD option? Is this a time to help innovate? Which system are you gonna help get further down the road? And do you care about a system that you can help push or do you just want a finished product that you can use? One of those reasons probably makes one of these systems right for you in a way that may not be right for everyone. So as we move forward into the digital FPV age, remember that we don't all have to be flying the same thing. It's okay if your buddy chooses walks now, you choose DJI and somebody else that's racing chooses HD Zero. Hopefully there's room for all of them to grow, but I suspect there'll only be room for two in the end. It could be just like the Highlander, where there could only be one. So what are you gonna buy? Or are you just gonna live out your life in the metaverse? It could be cheaper than trying to keep up with these HD FPV trends. To be continued, subscribe here to stay tuned to what's gonna happen next in the HD FPV wars.